Be sure to thank HyperX Thermaltake and Sapphire in the comments. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And also be sure to click on the links in the description. So we're at Corsair, they've got a new 330R. Actually, this is the 330R, but some things have changed. What's, what's different? Right. So we've got a titanium edition, so it's a new yep. color. Uh, we've also switched to an inlaid aluminum uh, panel here. Oh, it's the real deal? That's the real deal. Previously, it was a texturized yeah. plastic, but the, uh, we've upgraded to real metal here. We've also upgraded inside here. We've got a uh, fan controller, so you've got a three-speed fan controller for up to three fans, um, and the price uh, stays the same, so it's still $89.99 retail. I think you should uh, raise it. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> our audience uh, would like to pay more, please. If, yeah, well, if you, hey, you know, if you want to pay more, that's that's yeah, fine they, with us, for yeah, sure. I think they will. <laughs> uh, and then moving on right along, we got the Blackout Edition here. Yep, Blackout Edition, largely the same, just a different color, so you get a yep. little bit more options here. But uh, same uh, eighty nine ninety nine price point, unless okay. you want to pay more. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to pay more. <laughs> okay, 100R. All right. Uh, now, um, and we also have the 100R Silent Editions. We have That's right. two new uh, entry-level cases. So what can you tell yeah. us about these? So these are uh, you know new entry-level cases, like you said. Uh, 100R is, uh, shares the internal layout of our spec cases, which have been uh, you know very popular. Um, it has the, the more kind of refined front uh, panel here that uh, is reminiscent of the 200R, which yeah, is nice a, and clean. Exactly, exactly. So the 200R has always been a really good selling case. Um, this is a smaller case, so if you're looking for something smaller, um, you know this is about as small as you can get and still fit all the full-size ATX components. So yeah, this looks like a uh, you know micro ATX case, but it's not. Oh yeah. Now, can you fit a 200? Uh, uh, I mean a, a 240 up here? So you cannot do that. So you there, you won't be able to install a cooler on the top. You can fit the uh, the uh, HADI or any other 120 millimeter cooler on the back, but unfortunately we it's too uh, too short to fit both fans and a radiator on the top. Right. And it does have the window on the uh, the standard edition there. The uh, silent edition over here has no window, um, but we've opened it up to take a look here. Um, the other changes here is it's uh, $10 more, and for that extra $10, uh, you get sound dampening foam on all the panels. Um, the side panels, oops. Side panels, front panel, and on the top, we've removed those uh, fan mount areas so you get a little bit uh, quieter uh, system, and we've also added a fan control switch on the back there. Uh, so you can control up to three fans on this case uh, as well, just like the 330. Awesome. All right, now you're uh, showing off the uh, HG10. We've seen this a few times, but mm -hmm. I just want to quickly go over this because I, I know our audience has seen this a lot, but you have a, yeah. a couple of tests here with some NVIDIA models. Yes, so now we have support for NVIDIA 700 series cards. Uh, it's going to be compatible with 770, 780, 780 Ti, and Titan and Titan Black. Um, we've got here the demo showing two identical systems with the only difference being uh, we've got our GPU cooler, uh, GPU cooling brand bracket with an H75 uh, compared to the standard uh, NVIDIA cooler. And so the first, the first thing I want you guys to notice here is the temperature difference right there. Can you see that? La 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 la. There we go. So there is 59, and that's with the bracket. And over here is the stock. It is around 85, 84, 83. So yeah, quite a bit hotter. Yeah, and then the other differences you're going to notice is the fan speed is a lot higher on the stock cooler. Uh, we on, on our bracket we reuse that blower fan uh, from the card, and it's run, and that's you know can be a very loud loud fan, that probably the loudest uh, in your system when you're running full blast. So you know even when you're stressing out the card, it's much quieter with the uh, the bracket in our cooler over there, and. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is the frames per second are dropping on the stock cooler by about uh, you know five, six, seven frames per second. Really that much compared, yeah. So the throttling a bit then. Exactly, exactly. All right, this is uh, probably maybe yeah, probably the most exciting thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, your new water cooling unit, uh, 280. Yeah, nice to see a yeah. 280. 280, yeah, we had a 280 before, the H110. This is an upgraded version that's going to take its place. It's the H110i GT. Um, so it's been improved in just about every way. The you know the, one of the big uh, major improvements is the uh, are, are the new fans that ship with it. They are uh, designed in house. They're 140 millimeter. Uh, they're SP 140 uh, L models, which uh, we, the L kind of just indicates that they're OEM models that we ship with the cooler. Um, but we tested a lot of 140 millimeter fans, and these are the best ones that we've ever ever tested, so we're really happy about it. I'm going to go ahead and put the mic uh, in there. I'm not going to touch the volume. Yeah, go for it. Right in there. I'm not touching this volume, so you can hear my voice. And now, there we go. That's the inside. No bars. 
In addition to the fans, major improvement of the fans. Previous gen had kind of off-the-shelf 140 millimeter fans, and you know everybody's been asking for high-performance 140 millimeter fans, and you you don't really you don't want to swap them out if you get this cooler because these are the best that there are right now. You also get uh, you know the full uh, Corsair Link integration, so you can have cu custom fan profiles, uh, complete monitoring, and you can play with the LED light. Uh, you can have it either set to a static. Uh, uh, color to match the rest of your system, or you can tie it to any of the temperatures uh, that are being registered in Corsair Link. So you can have it reflect the temperature of your CPU, your GPU, uh, whatever you like. Full on monitoring, and that's going on on the screen right now. Yep, yep. Light on there. You have it set to temperature now, but uh, you can have it set to cycling, or the normal mode is just a uh, static mode where you can change. Yeah, and the temperature just will just want. start going whatever color you yeah, set. Yeah, so if you set the temperature, you can see you can set the gradients. Uh, to you know, various colors. So at 25, it's blue. At 35, it's green. At 66, it gets red. And your friends are going to come in here and uh, you know unseat your cooler <laughs> and then change your temperature warning color so you yeah, think it's green. Exactly. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> I can see this. These are illegal. That's that's <laughs> next level pranking right there, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, now you've got the HX 1200i. This is, uh, yep. the, the, what's the I stand for? Uh, the I Amazing. is <laughs> Amazing. The I stand, um, the I stands for I'm going to go with intelligence because so all of our digital power supplies have the eyes. So right. you get digital monitoring and control with uh, the HXI series. Uh, previously, it only went up to 1050, and we had launched a 1200AX and a 1500AX, and we were you know we had a gap there for the HX. So now we've got an HX 1200i with platinum efficiency, uh, fully digital, has all the digital functionality as our AX 1500i, and uh, you know it's very solid uh, power supply. So since it's fully digital, it's uh, multiple rails, but the digitally it can be become one large 12 volt rail if, if you like. Exactly, exactly. So you can, if you like the single rail, you can do that. If you want the multi-rail, you can have that as well. And by the way, everybody, uh, these days, multiple rails is not necessarily a bad thing anymore. Mm -hmm. The motherboards can handle it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I've seen some RAM running at uh, 3333 around here, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything running at 3400 yet. I mean, other than some you know overclocking benchmarks and mm -hmm. records, but this is like, you guys are selling a kit 3400? We are selling a 3400 kit. It's this kit right here. Uh, it'll be available before the end of the month from our from our online store directly. You um, realize this is going to cause some customer service issues when people get this, and it's not going to work in their motherboard and stuff, right? That's, I mean, yeah. So hopefully, if you're you're spending you know a thousand dollars on memory, know. you're you're aware of what kind of motherboard you need to run it at those speeds. But you never we, know. People are crazy. Yeah, there's always going to be a few. But uh, you know, this we actually have the memory running at 3,500 megahertz on this board. So this is the uh, the Gigabyte X99 SoC Champion board. Uh, you know, one of the only boards we can get to run at these these high speeds. So we've color matched the heat sinks. Nice. Um, it looked really nice. Um, currently, we only have plans to, to have the orange heat sinks on these uh, uh, these modules here, kind of a special edition. Yep. Um, but we've got a lot of good feedback, and you know we, we may have to you know do some other colors in the future. I want to note that one of the things that helps the the memory uh, actually work on this board is the fact that they've moved the memory a little bit closer here, mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to just reduce a little bit of the latency, moves the traces around into a better spot. So exactly. uh, they did that, and now they can run them a little. I mean, there's other things going on here too with the V-Regs and the power delivery. There's some capacitors there, but yeah, yeah, th this board we've, can do it. We've been able to run uh, 3400 on the ASUS uh, Rampage board, um, but couldn't quite hit 3500. So this is the board that can can really get you know the full potential out of the memory. You now have a Fizen controller-based uh, SSD. Let's talk about this for a minute. That's right. So. We just announced this week the uh, Neutron Series XT solid state drive. We're using the Fizon four core controller. Um, so what the, this controller allows us to do is maintain and sustain very high transfer speeds. And we're showing it off in this uh, in this black magic camera here. Um, <laughs> so that's a spacer. Um, you know, there's two different uh, sizes for, for uh, you know, the two and a half inch drives. You've got either seven millimeter or nine millimeter, and all these drives are seven millimeter. They come with the spacer just in case you have a camera or a laptop that, that still takes the yeah, thicker. Uh, it needs it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, this is a, a Blackmagic 4K camera that takes uh, raw video, uh, uncompressed. Um, and in order to do that, you need to be able to sustain a, a data transfer rate of about 480 megabytes per second. I'm just messing and, with this uh, thing. I'm gonna break it right Yeah, now. yeah. Okay, it. <laughs> we do have to give this back to Blackmagic, so. <laughs> <laughs> did, they, did, they, did they specify working? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Working we'll we'll have to check or? the paperwork. Can you get um, it back in pieces? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but so yeah so this drive we're uh, we're getting this qualified for uh, uh, you know official uh, qualification with this camera um, you know like I said to to do raw 4K you need to have 480 megabyte sustained oh, data yeah. transfer otherwise you're going to start dropping frames and this drive has no problem keeping up with that it's available in up to 960 gigabyte um, which comes in at uh, 539 price point for retail um, it'll also be available in 480 and uh, 240.
Nice. Looking forward to checking out one of those. Yeah. So uh, we have some really substantial um, flash drives here. Yeah, so the the, uh, the internal components are largely unchanged, but we have refreshed the housing on all of our uh, flash drives here. So it's actually using a zinc alloy, uh, which feels really heavy duty in your hand. You really got to feel it to, to appreciate it. Um, the GS line um, has existed for a while. This is basically the fastest drive we can make using traditional flash components, whereas the GTX gets the SSD controller so and is faster. effectively, yeah. So uh, speeds, you know, uh, basically GS is about 300 uh, megabyte transfer speed and uh, the GTX is 400 to 450 uh, transfer speed, so that's like you know SSD right it's, in your pocket. Yeah, it's a nice little small pocket mm -hmm. SSD. Put an OS on there, that'd be fun. We're at uh, the Corsair gaming section here with uh, Jason. He's going to tell us a little bit about their uh, new mice products. We're looking at the uh, the Corsair Saber. Yes, it's a uh, Saber RGB. Uh, we make it in two versions. We have a laser 8200 DPI version, and then a 6400 DPI optical version. So we give that choice to the end user if they prefer an optical or they prefer a laser. And then the features that all uh, that both the mice have in common are they're ultra light, 100 grams. So they're gonna be lighter than the Razer Death Adder and the Logitech G402. So it'll be great for uh, low DPI play. Um, if you're the type of guy or girl that picks up a mouse and, and swipes it around, it's gonna give you a nice light, uh, light feel to it. Um, RGB backlighting, so it fits the theme of our RGB keyboards. You'll be, to be able to adjust the logo, scroll wheel, DPI indicator, and also the front headlight to any uh, multiple color independently. So it'll be, it'll be a great match with your, uh, your brand new RGB keyboard. This is something we're working on uh, with game developers, um, is integration of the keyboard backlighting into the game. So we created this Quake 3 demo to show you, uh, uh, to show everybody what we're working on. So not necessarily, we're not working with Quake, but we're gonna be working with like some A-plus titles coming this year. All right, so what, is, what does this thing actually do? So what it's gonna do is, as you play, um, you are gonna see backlighting react to things in the game. So you'll have, um, when you get hit, it will turn red. When you die, it turns red. When you hit someone, you're gonna see the feedback. When you pick up health, um, you know, the keyboard's gonna flash green. So it's gonna give you that immersive experience with the feedback of the, uh, of the game itself. So we see that as like the next step for, you know, RGB keyboard right now, you can do great lighting effects. Um, you can do ripple typing, pulse typing, and then just, you know, static backlighting if you want to make QWERDF while you're playing League. Um, so this is like the next step where the game does it automatically to your keyboard, the lighting. Excellent. We all know HyperX makes gaming hardware, but they also have a YouTube channel centered on gaming culture that is about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Go ahead and click here to check it out. You may not know it, but Sapphire is sort of the AMD brand. They even make the OEM cards for AMD themselves. Click on the screen to see what's new and uh, maybe some secrets. Thermaltake always has a lot going on, but this year they really have a lot going on and they have upped their game. Click on the screen to check it out. 